Elon Musk once said he wanted to prove an electric car could be the highest performance car in the world. And the scary part is he didn't say it like a dream. He said it like a challenge, like a gauntlet he threw at every automaker that ever told you cheap and fast can't sit in the same driveway. Now here's the twist that should make you pause for a second. The car picking up that challenge isn't some $100,000 flagship. It's the 2026 Tesla Model 2 Senior Edition, and the secret isn't one wild feature. It's a pairing that sounds almost wrong when you hear it out loud. Dual motors and aluminum ion batteries. Two words you probably never expected to hear in the same sentence as affordable. So the real question is not can it move, the real question is this. Can Tesla take an entry-level EV and give it real performance without turning it into a fragile toy that costs you a fortune to own? Because anyone can build something quick one time. The hard part is building something quick that stays quick, stays stable, stays predictable, and stays affordable when you live with it every day. Rain, heat, cold, traffic, long highway runs, aging joints, slower reaction times. Everything real drivers deal with. That's what we're breaking down today. Not the hype, not the wishful thinking, the engineering logic behind this combo, what the early testing patterns suggest, where the numbers look strong and where the risk could be hiding. And stick with me, because the most important part isn't the top speed or the zero to 60 brag. The most important part is what Tesla is quietly changing for older drivers who want smooth power, safer control and less fatigue without paying luxury money. If you're tired of recycled Tesla talk that says the same thing every week, subscribe to Torque Element and help us hit our 3,000 subscriber goal. We're building a channel that actually explains the why behind the tech, not just the wow. And at the end of this video, I'm going to give you one simple question you can ask yourself that will instantly tell you if this Model 2 setup is smart for you or a trap you should avoid. Now let's talk about the part that sounds like science fiction to most people. A dual motor torque vectoring system in a budget car, pushing a sub 7 second zero to 60, while still aiming to keep the price under 15 grand in the most aggressive scenario. That claim alone makes people skeptical and they should be skeptical. Because when you hear performance promises at a low price, your brain should automatically ask, okay, what did they cut? But Tesla's angle here is different. They're not trying to buy performance with expensive parts. They're trying to manufacture performance cheaply through scale, simplified architecture, and software control that replaces heavy mechanical complexity. The front motor is tuned for clean, instant launch power, not a massive, overbuilt unit that wastes energy. A precise motor that hits strong low-end torque the kind you feel when you pull out of a tight parking lot or merge onto a highway with zero hesitation. In the scenario Tesla is chasing, the front motor handles the first punch, the clean step-off, the moment where most cars feel heavy and sluggish. And because it's a motor, it doesn't need to build revs. It just goes. The sensation matters for older drivers, too, because smooth, instant response means fewer stressful moments. Fewer will it make it gaps in traffic. Then the rear motor brings the mid-range power. That's where passing happens. That's where you go from moving to confident. It's the difference between being stuck behind a slow truck on a two-lane road and being able to overtake without white-knuckle panic. The rear motor is where you feel that second wave, not as a jerk, but as controlled pull. Now combine those two motors and you get something more important than raw acceleration. You get control. This is where torque vectoring shows up, and this is where the Model 2 starts to sound less like a cheap commuter and more like a small performance machine. Torque vectoring is basically the car deciding, in real time, how much power to send to which wheel, and doing it faster than your hands can correct a mistake. In a normal car, you turn the steering wheel, the tires do their best, and if traction gets weird, stability control steps in after you already started slipping. It reacts. Torque vectoring aims to anticipate. It can push more power to the wheel that has grip and reduce power to the wheel that would cause understeer or slide. 
So when you're on a rain-soaked Florida expressway and you take a curve that feels fine until it suddenly doesn't, the car can tighten the line without drama. That's not about racing. That's about staying out of trouble when roads are slick and drivers around you are unpredictable. And here's the part most people miss. Entry-level cars usually don't do this well because it's expensive to engineer and expensive to test. But Tesla's advantage is software plus data. They don't treat control as a fixed mechanical setting. They treat it like an evolving system. The more real driving patterns they see, the more they refine the behavior. That's the theory. And if it works the way Tesla wants, it means the Model 2 can feel stable and composed in situations where cheap cars normally feel nervous. You also have to talk about weight because dual motors add weight. There's no magic there. Two motors weigh more than one. So Tesla's strategy is to claw that weight back elsewhere. Lighter subframes, cast structures, and material choices that cut pounds without cutting strength. The goal is to keep the overall efficiency high enough that the car doesn't become one of those fast but thirsty EVs that drains battery every time you touch the accelerator. This is where the early efficiency claims come in. Tesla wants a setup where you can enjoy quick launches without destroying range, which is the main complaint people have about performance EVs. You can build something quick, but if it punishes you for using it, owners stop using it. Then the performance becomes a party trick. Tesla is trying to avoid that trap by balancing motor tuning, power electronics, and region behavior. Regenerative braking is also a big part of this dual motor story. With dual motors, you can recover energy more effectively because both ends of the car can contribute to region control depending on traction and stability needs. In stop-and-go traffic, that matters. It can make the car feel smoother because you're not bouncing between heavy braking and sudden acceleration. It also helps you stretch range in city driving where older drivers spend a lot of time. Now let's talk about stability on the highway, because that's where older drivers often care the most. It's not the zero to 60 that changes your life. It's the calmness at 70 miles per hour. It's the way the car holds its lane in wind. It's the way it stays planted when a gust hits you in an open area. If the Model 2 truly lowers its center of gravity and tightens its arrow, it could reduce that floaty feeling that makes cheap cars exhausting on long trips. That's also where torque vectoring can quietly save you, not in a dramatic way, in a small way. The car adjusts, you stay centered, and your brain doesn't have to work as hard. Less mental load equals less fatigue. Less fatigue equals safer driving. And that brings us to the part Tesla is clearly aiming at with the Senior Edition label. It's not just a car seniors can afford. It's a car seniors can drive longer without feeling beat up. This is where senior mode becomes more than a gimmick. Imagine a power curve that's slightly softened, not to make the car slow, but to make it smooth. The same power is available when needed, but the delivery is calmer. Departures feel velvet, not punchy. Because for older bodies, jerk is the enemy. Jerk creates discomfort, especially on longer drives. Smoothness keeps you relaxed. So instead of building two different cars, Tesla can build one hardware setup and offer different behavior profiles. A mode that reduces aggressive torque spikes, calms the throttle, and prioritizes comfort. That's the kind of change that manufacturing philosophy is different. Build one core platform, make it scalable, and then change behavior with software and options. That can keep costs down while still delivering a strong base product. But here's what you need to watch closely. Warranty. Because when a company introduces new tech, the warranty is where the truth hides. If the battery chemistry is truly long life, Tesla will still likely protect itself with a standard warranty window. That means you, the buyer, are protected for a set number of years and miles. And after that, you carry the risk. If you're buying this car for five to seven years, you're probably fine. If you're buying it as the last car you'll ever own, you need to understand you're leaning on chemistry that still needs time to prove itself in the real world. So let's bring this back to a simple decision point. 
because this is where people either get smart or get emotional. If you want a budget EV that is calm, stable, efficient, and still quick enough to feel exciting, the dual motor Model 2 concept makes sense. It doesn't just make the car faster. It makes it easier to drive in bad weather, easier to control in tight situations, and less tiring over long trips. If aluminum ion performs even close to what early demonstrations suggest, it could reduce your fear about battery aging and fast charging damage. It could make the car feel strong for longer. It could make ownership feel simpler. But if the pricing depends on best case incentives, if the most exciting numbers depend on future production quality, and if you plan to keep this car past the warranty by many years, you should be cautious. Not scared, just cautious. Because being cautious is how you avoid expensive surprises. Now I want your input because I read every comment and I use your feedback to shape what we cover next. Does dual motor torque vectoring finally make a budget EV exciting enough to be your next car? Or do you think it's overkill in an entry-level model? Type dual motor if you think it changes everything. Or type single motor if you think the simpler setup makes more sense. And for the battery, what matters most to you? The potential long lifespan, the ultra-fast charging, the stable performance in extreme temperatures, or the lower long-term cost? Tell me which one you care about most, because that answer reveals what kind of buyer you are, and it tells you whether the Model 2 Senior Edition is a match for your real life or just a fun idea. If you enjoyed this breakdown and you want more deep divies that actually explain the engineering without drowning you in hype, subscribe to Torque Element and help us hit our 3,000 subscriber goal. We've got more coming, including a hard look at where these claims are strongest and where the real-world risks could show up first. Like, comment, and subscribe to Torque Element.